Ever been bamboozled trying to pick a new phone when the sales staff starts into a diatribe about frequency bands? I mean, what the are frequency bands? Tech bites. <laughs> Mobile cellular networks use radio frequencies for communication and to ensure each generation of technology can work without interference from other services, competing operators, and previous mobile technologies. Each generation is allocated multiple frequency bands as options for operators. But just like music, not all bands are created equal. Most older mobile generations use lower frequency bands where resources are limited. And while they may have been suitable for voice services a few decades ago, they aren't nearly enough for all of us to keep up with the Kardashians. Low bands, those under 1 gigahertz, provide better coverage because they can travel longer distances and even penetrate inside buildings. Unfortunately, spectrum at lower frequencies is in short supply, so operators don't get much. Higher bands can't travel as far and so provide less coverage, but there's typically more frequency available for use. To help visualize this, a 100 watt light bulb emits visible light in the terahertz range, but it's easily blocked by thick paper. Meanwhile, that obnoxious 100 watt car subwoofer that hits notes as low as 20 hertz can be heard 100 meters away, and unfortunately, even indoors. What does this mean in practical terms? Low bands are perfect for low-density suburban and rural applications and can easily penetrate walls, making them ideal for indoor coverage, where higher bands are perfect for high-density areas like city centers. Operators use a combination of frequency bands to balance between coverage and capacity, and more importantly, their ugly stepsister, cost. Newer mobile generations provide more bandwidth than previous generations by allocating additional frequency bands, and larger chunks of frequency within each band. Where 2G and 3G worked in only a handful of bands, 4G can operate in nearly 100 bands, including all the 2G and 3G bands. And many of these new bands are towards the higher end of the frequency range, where there's more bandwidth available for use. 5G goes further, and in addition to using all previous bands, increases the number of bands again and even introduces a higher band called millimeter wave. On account of the fact that the distance between crests of each wave are between one and 10 millimeters. It's pretty smart, right? This new band includes super high frequencies that are largely unused. So operators can get huge chunks of 50 megahertz to 400 megahertz compared to the two megahertz to 20 megahertz chunks they were given for previous generations. Unfortunately, it's so high, signals don't travel well. It's basically line of sight, meaning if you can't see the antenna, you're out of luck. Now back to our shopping experience. The good news is that most modern phones support multiple bands, including millimeter wave and multiple technologies. But for other connected devices, vendors may limit the number of bands supported to help reduce costs. As chip prices drop though, I'd expect to even see these devices Hop on the bandwagon. Thanks for watching. Tech bites. Is it just me or is it hard to get a signal in here? How many bars you got? <laughs>